What's up guys, Visual here, but you can call me James. And in this video, I show you how I color correct my designs in Photoshop. So guys, before we get started with the video, I would just like to quickly thank bookmark.com for sponsoring the video. If you don't know already, Bookmark is hands down one of the easiest and coolest website builders out there, letting you create your own personal website, whether that be a design portfolio or an online store in the matter of minutes. It uses an AI website builder, which means you can create a site with no technical knowledge. If this does interest you, make sure you head over to bookmark.com and you can find more information on how to get started there. So guys, one of the most common questions that I get asked on a daily basis is um, how do you color correct your designs and make them look so much better? Now to this question, I normally answer saying color adjustments and camera roll filter, but a lot of people don't actually seem to understand this. Maybe they've never used camera roll filter before or they just go about it completely the wrong way. So I thought a dedicated video on this topic would definitely come in handy for you guys. Now we all know color corrections will of course either, now we all know color corrections will either make or break a design and if you're not adding them already then I honestly don't know what you're doing as they are so important you will need to understand how to actually go about creating a color correction correctly that was so hard to say and of course this video will go on to help you um, actually create these so without further ado let's open up Photoshop let's get a design that we haven't added a color correction to already and I will show you how I go about creating the perfect color correction okay so as you guys can see I've now got Photoshop open and I've also opened up a header design that I created a long time ago now purely because I think this is going to work really well when showing you how to make a color correction this header design is of course complete excluding the color correction so make sure that you do have your design completed and ready to add those color adjustments on top if you need to make any changes it is possible to do so however it's going to be a lot harder so make sure your design is finished as I said and once it is you can now begin step one is something that I always do and that's just grouping all of the layers together this way it's a lot more organized when you are adding the color corrections on top so in order to do this all you have to do is press shift on your top layer scroll all the way down I have loads of layers on this one and just press shift on the bottom layer and then clicking on that group icon down at the bottom you will now have a new group created with those layers in all you want to do is just press ctrl and j on your keyboard in order to duplicate the group and from there you want to press ctrl e and basically what this will do is of course duplicate the group and merge it into one single layer okay so the next step is to actually crop this header so it fits the exact document sizing if I just grab my move tool here you can see that there is some extra extra parts hanging off the document. So in order to crop this, all you need to do is grab your marquee tool, just below your move tool, which is M on your keyboard. Make sure that you do have the rectangle uh, marquee tool selected. And from here, just select all of the design, uh, which in this case is the header. And from there, you will see it's all selected. Right click and go to layer via cut. And as you can see, you will have a new layer, which if we grab our move tool here, you can see um, fits the exact document sizing with no extra parts. And now with that top layer selected, we can begin to add the color correction. So first of all, you want to head over to filter here at the top and you want to scroll down to camera raw filter. Now, if this option is not available for you here and you do not see it, then you will have to check the version of Photoshop that you are using. Anyways, from here, of course, just click on camera raw filter. And as you can see, it will take a few seconds to load. But from here, you will actually get a new window open. It's taken a little bit of a while now. And there we go. It is finally open. So the first thing I am going to do is actually enlarge this window so you can see it a lot easier as I said. My design is slightly hard to see as well. So uh, using the zoom tool here on the left hand side, I'm just going to zoom in so it's a lot easier to view when adding these color adjustments. Okay, so first of all here on the right hand side, we have a basic tab. Of course, this is self-explanatory. This is the most basic color adjustments that you can make. Uh, however though, uh, I just wanna say that a lot of these will actually really improve the design. So first of all, we have temperature. If we look over to the right hand side of this slider, you can see that we have more greens and yellows for me this isn't really going to appear because my design is mainly blue uh, so it's just going to create this really mucky color for me like I said not going to work so I'm going to move it over to the left hand side which is where the blues are of course not on the max minus 100 because that looks horrible so what I'm going to do is just move it over slightly to the left around about 
I'm going to say minus 18 works really well. Underneath this, we have tint, which is actually very similar. As you can see, we have uh, greens over to the left and a pink over to the right, and of course, colors in between. So for me, I'm going to move mine over to the right hand side a little bit, only slightly, and that will just bring out the blues even more. Moving on from here and going down, we have exposure. This basically adjusts the amount of light showing on the design. So if you increase it, more light will be there. It will become whiter. If you decrease it, it will become darker. Uh, very self-explanatory. For me, I'm going to actually decrease it slightly only because it's a little bit too bright. Um, I'm just going to put it on something like, uh, there we go, minus 0.05. So it hasn't made too much of a difference, but of course it's a little bit darker. Just to mention for a lot of these, it will actually depend on the design that you have. So you will have to actually adjust it and see which one fits your work. Moving on from here and going down, we have contrast. So this basically adjusts the amount of luminance and color on the actual image. So if we move it over to the left hand side, as you can see, uh, there's literally a mucky color on my screen because there's no contrast between the colors. If we move it up, as you can see, it is a little bit too much. So we need to find a nice median between them around about plus 20, I would say. I think this looks really nice. The next one we have is highlights. So if we increase it, those white highlights in my design will actually be more prominent. But if I decrease it, they will be less prominent. So for me, I'm actually going to increase it because I think it makes it stand out a whole lot more, especially that logo there in the middle. Underneath this, we have shadows. So decreasing this will actually darken the shadows and increasing it will lighten up the shadows. So for me, I'm actually going to decrease it, I would say slightly around about minus 10 will do. I think that looks really nice, especially on the right and left hand side where we have those dark parts. It just makes it a little bit more darker, contrasting the colors. Underneath this, we have whites and blacks. Now for the whites, of course, if you increase it, anything that was white or even and just a light color on the image will become white and it's just going to basically blind you and if you decrease it it will do the complete opposite anything that was white um, or just a light color will just be darkened down a bit so for me I'm actually going to just probably keep it where it is it doesn't really matter too much here um, the blacks however I'm going to adjust slightly if I move it down as you can see the blacks become more prominent if I move it up then uh, it's basically almost like adjusting the contrast and moving that down. So for me, I'm actually going to turn my blacks down a little bit here on around about minus 10. Moving on from here, the next section that we have is texture, clarity, and dehaze. So for texture, if I decrease it here, as you can see, it will almost like blur the colors in the image. Uh, but if you increase it, everything will become more sharp. It's almost like adding sharpness. Um, it is a lot if you increase it. I would obviously use this uh, wisely. Please don't increase it loads. Uh, same with the clarity. For me, I'm just going to put it on around about plus six, just a little bit of uh, additional texture texture maybe even like plus 10 will do uh, just so it stands out a little bit more for clarity you can increase that as well as you can see it uh, basically has a similar effect we now have dehaze which is almost like the whites and black um, adjustments that we made earlier if we decrease it here the whites will become more prominent and maybe a bit too prominent and uh, if we increase it here the blacks will become more prominent so for me I'm actually going to just keep mine on zero because I'm happy how it is okay so moving on here to the next tab we have tone curves we have two different sections inside here. We have parametric and point. I never really mess with parametric. So just click on point and from here, you want to actually create an S shape in the graph. So first of all here on the top right hand corner, you want to actually uh, move that graph up only very slightly, just in that top right hand box, only so it's up slightly. And then you want to move over to the bottom left hand corner and drag that one down slightly. Not much, only around about there. And as you can see, it's put my input on 30 for output on 30 just make sure the numbers are fairly similar and uh, yeah that will do basically just adjusting the curves which is almost like the contrast and brightness very very similar from here you want to head over to the next tab which is detail as you can see here you will get sharpening and also noise reduction first of all for sharpening I always tend to increase this please don't increase it loads because as you can see it really does ruin the design but increase it slightly um, especially if you are posting it onto Twitter because it will make 
make it look a lot better um, as Twitter does actually uh, mess with the quality slightly. So I'm going to put my sharpen on around about 20 and that works perfectly for me. Underneath this we have radius detail and masking. I always leave these exactly the same but of course if you just adjust them you may see some changes but for me like I said I just keep them how they are. Straight below this we have noise reduction. Really not relevant for this design and unless you put loads of noise on your design for whatever reason it probably won't be for you. You can also adjust these other sliders here at the bottom but like I said for me really not needed so let's move over to the next tab HSL adjustments. HSL stands for hue saturation and luminance of course and as you can see here under each tab you will have all of these different colors. These are very easy to understand of course we have the different sections as I said if you go to saturation and you want to increase the saturation of your uh, blues for example you can do it here just increase it and as you can see the blues will become more prominent if you want to decrease it though you can do that here as well it is very easy to understand hopefully that does explain the HSL adjustments uh, fairly well if I wanted to change the color of this design for example to like pink I could do so here uh, I would just have to head over to where the blues are increase it uh, so it gets that nice pink color and from here I could of course adjust the pink uh, if I move up the purples there and the magentas I adjust those there we go that looks like a really nice pink design as I said I'm just going to keep mine blue put them all on zero there and keep it how it is next tab here we have split toning I never really even use uh, this so I'm not going to lie I have no clue what it is the next one here we have lens corrections uh, so if I decrease the amount here under distortion uh, it will create a weird or fish eye effect for me i'm going to keep it how it is this doesn't really look good at all underneath this we have defringe of course if you've got fringing on your design i never seem to use this i do however use the one below vignette here i always seem to add a very small vignette just so it does focus on the middle of the design a lot more please don't go overboard though and put your vignette on like minus 100 never looks good so just put a small one there maybe like minus 10 my sides are already dark on this header so i'm going to only put it on a small amount as I said you can also adjust the midpoint but I always like to keep mine on 50 so it is in the middle and uh, moving on we are on the next tab now we've got grain as you can see really easy increase it um, and it will become more grainy depending on your design it may look good but for me I'm going to keep mine on zero and the next tab here is calibration I never really seem to use this tab either but by the looks of it you can of course adjust the tint hue saturation um, kind of similar to the HSL adjustments almost like another tab you may want to actually mess around with this like I said I never use it so let's leave that one and finally we have presets so if you wish to save this preset then you can do so here all you have to do is uh, scroll down to the bottom here where it says new preset click on that and a new tab will open up you can name your preset so i just put uh tut for the video and press ok as you can see if we go to user presets and open that one up it will be inside there in inside here there are also uh presets that photoshop give you i never seem to use these as i said i create my own uh so yeah i leave those but you might want to have a look at them uh maybe there's one in there that will work for you but apart from that the color adjustments in camera roll filter are now complete if you wish to have a look at the before and after all you have to do is click on this uh, little Y at the bottom click on that and as you can see the before will appear on the left and the after is on the right but yeah from there once you are done all you have to do is just press the OK button there on the bottom right hand corner and it will now add those color adjustments to your design anyways guys that is it for the video hopefully it did go on to help you if it did and you went on to enjoy it make sure to leave a like that would be much appreciated as well as that if you are new to the channel and you would like to see more videos like this in the future then please consider subscribing with post notifications on and you will be notified every time i upload a brand new video anyways as i said hopefully you did go on to enjoy this has been visual or james and i'm out peace <laughs>